Well, the name of this week's video, Peak of the Week, brought to you by Lost GPS. Thank you, Stolen. So we're doing a Friday's Pike Day. So we are going to make today a racing ute for Pike's Peak. Oh yes. If you're unaware of what Pike's Peak is, it also goes by the race to the clouds. It's basically a really awesome race up a hill that's so tall that people have to have oxygen piped into their helmet to make sure that they don't go loopy or pass out by the time they reach the top. That's the sort of thing we're doing today. So it's going to be made out of fiberglass, space frame, Oh, you know what? Actually, no, this one's probably going to use the vehicle's actual body. So it is going to be... Oh, a ladder, yes. And it is made out of steel, front longitudinal, double wishbone. And we're going to say that the rear suspension, which would normally be some sort of solid axle leaf, probably, we're going to replace that with push rod because, I mean... You've got the room for it, it's not as if they're lacking. And we are going a much smaller body. This is not really a typical Australian ute. This one only is 2.5 inches. You know what, actually? No, this is going to be a space frame because we're going to say that this is based on a real ute, except it got modified and made shorter for the track and all that kind of stuff. And when they made it shorter, they may as well have just made it into a space frame. So that's what we're doing. It's also going to come with just a regular old V8. I could LS swap it again. But I think we're going to create a brand new one. Do we go something like a Ferrari? I think maybe yes. So it'll be made out of aluminium silicon compound, dual over cans, five valves per cylinder, ALSI again. And here's where we start getting funny. Forged steel? Yes. Heavy duty forged? Heavy duty forged. Nice. Do we... Give it really high RPM, very possibly. K profile, way up. Head quality, way up. But not, you know, not the absolute maximum because these guys are like still trying to do it on a budget because they're not taking this completely seriously. This is a ute though, <laughs> don't forget. We are doing open class, so to have this sort of thing, <laughs> just, like, why would you enter a ute into an open class? It's silly, don't do it. Variable valve timing, turbocharger, ball bearing, and yes, make this a big one. Injection, I'm pretty sure multipoint, I don't think the, wait, do Ferraris come with direct injection? I'm not sure, we're gonna say that they got an older used engine, so it will be a multipoint, not a direct injection. Per cylinder, performance, then ultimate fuel because this is a race car. Raise that RPM quite a bit. Increase the quality a little bit because this is a, uh, you know, high-end vehicle. Dual exhaust, probably really big for this sort of thing. No cat, no mufflers. This one is going to be loud, guys. We're not creating quite as much power as I'd like. Uh, <laughs> all right, let's, uh, let's, let's fix that. Wait, you know what I've never done? And I kind of want to do now. I have never made a screaming non-crossplane. I've never done that, so let's do that. Well, there we go. A little over a thousand kilowatts, which is what, 13, 1400 horsepower? Yeah, over 1400 horsepower. Not bad at all for a 4.2 liter, I think it was. Yeah, 4.276, nice. Let's give it a bit of a listen. Well, that's a new sound. Oh, and that's a good sound. Let's give it a bit of a paint. Well, it seems that they still haven't implemented all of these material paints yet, because I wanted to go with my racing yellow on at least something. Seems that we don't have the choice. So instead we have to do it to the entire valve cover, which I, I, I suppose I'm fine with. Let's move on. Now we have two choices. Do we go the regular ute body or do we go the dual cab version? The version which nobody buys. Okay, so I don't know whether you guys know this, but here in Australia, you do get both the normal single cab and then also the dual cab as well. But this is the one that sells used a whole lot more. Like these will go about 10 years later for about five to $15,000. But if you get a dual cab, <laughs> that'll sell for like one to $2,000. They are absolutely hated. They're only really ever bought by the government that wants to fit more people into a vehicle but still want to be able to carry big stuff, but don't realize that you can't really do both. So we're going to stick with the regular pickup because that's the desirable body that everybody with a half a brain wants. Oh, what a great slider. I can, I can go doofus or slightly less doofus. Great. I also want to tell you that, oh my God, it has been so hard for me to abstain from making more Pikes Peak videos. <laughs> I have wanted to make these so much. Well, that's dumb and stupid. What the hell? Huh. That is a weird way to have your window. 
Okay, well, let's just uh, yeah, leave that high and rate, okay? That's not a convertible roof, is it? What the hell? What is that? I only just noticed it. Okay, time to pick the color. Do we just go white again? I really want to, but I think this time we're gonna go black. It is a convertible. It says that the convertible rooftop. What the hell? Well, that allows us to do this. There we go. Nice. I always wanted a uh, carbon fiber roofed <laughs> Ute. Now, running gear. Obviously, all wheel drive. This is gonna be a sequential because we don't have the money for a dual clutch or. Maybe we do, I'm not sure. We're gonna go with seven speed though. We're gonna increase the top speed quite a bit. Geared LSDs, give a little bit more to the rear. Even though there is no weight over the rear, that could be a mistake. Hmm, yeah, I don't know, bro. Increase that quality just a little bit because a lot of this will be like really high quality aftermarket stuff. Radial, semi-slicks and make them big. Yes. Yes! And increase that quality a bit. Vented two piston, vented one piston, done. Fully clad, a little bit of brake airflow. One seat, sports, none. Increase quality a little bit because this will be like a racing Recaro seat. No power steering, ABS at the very least. No safety, drop that quality down. Or maybe we'll go basic 90 safety, drop that quality down. Standard springs, gas monotube, and passive. And then hit race on that. Then, as always, bloop. There we go, much better. Unfortunately, our wheels are clipping through, but I have a solution. There we go, much better. Problem solved, right? Oh, well, that doesn't quite line up, right? And we'll deal with making the proper wheel arches invisible in a little bit. But for now, let's do the tweaking. Our top speed is quite dead on. Our zero to 100 is 2.4 seconds. Not bad at all, not bad at all. Our wheel spin is not great. I suppose we should probably put some downforce on this thing. Okay, here we go. We have the front splitter and two of these, uh, what are they, canards? I can't remember exactly and they will be not doing what they're meant to do, but they'll just be creating downforce. Then around to the back, we have ourselves a, uh, a hidden diffuser here, a real diffuser here, and a diffuser up here. Downforce up, yes, lots of. We're getting a lot of understeer though. Hmm, what about our wheels? What do our wheels say? Our wheels say we're in good shape, though they are now in better shape. There we go. So they start to lose control about 85 to 90-ish kind of area. This thing's got good. We're gonna increase the quality a little bit at least. What do our brakes say? Our brakes say no. Ha! <laughs> really they do. Oh my goodness. Okay, we've gone six piston in the front. Because we need to. Good thing we have ABS. Okay, reducing the rear wing angle will allow us to... And not have quite so much oversteer. At a regular sort of speed at about here, we're generating only a little bit of downforce, but at least it's downforce. Wait, what? Our tires have changed? Oh, you know what it is? It's probably to do with the fact that uh, those brakes are a lot heavier on the front. But what that allows us to do is bring our uh, tire size back up again, reducing our wheel spin whilst maintaining this nice in the middle here of no understeer, no oversteer kind of area. Nice. Thank you very much, convenience. What does automation say this can do around the track? A 149, they reckon. Also, that sounded really awesome. Let's listen to that again. That is a symphony of cylinders if I have ever heard one before. Oh, that's a good sound. I love it. Bring this down, 2.3 seconds to 100. We're still 2.3 seconds to 100. Our top speed is 340, which is fine. I don't see it doing a whole lot faster than that. I suppose now all that's left to do really is to make it look pretty. First thing I'm gonna do is try to uh, blank out these wheel arches. Oh no. So it seems that you cannot blank out these entire things because for some reason, the body mesh, which usually ends at the wheel arch and goes in for the inside of the wheel well, is not actually there. This is actually floating above the wheel area. So I can't blank out the interior part. That sucks. Well, I'm gonna have to go in and do a little bit of modifying of the file then uh, to blank that out. I have just realized I have never made an Australian brand before. So I'm gonna do something 
that uh, a lot of other Australian car company manufacturers do, and that is retconning Aboriginal words. And there is a new rang, which is one of the God knows how many <laughs> Aboriginal tribes uh, clan. They have a word for bang, and that word is chuta. So that's the name of our new Australian brand, the one to take over from where Holden's and Ford's left off. So this is gonna be a 2016 car, which is exactly when Holden's and Ford shut down in Australia. And the trim model is going to be after their word for where, or where are you, or something along that sort of lines, because you're gonna be really far behind when you're following this thing. And that is the Winja. It's also uh, pronounced the Winji, but we're gonna call it the Winja because that was the first one in the list. Are we ready to uh, go modify and take this over to BMNG? I think we are. Except for the fact that we need actually a badge. There we go, we've gone with like this sun symbol because God damn, it gets hot here in Australia. So we kind of need that. We've also brought it here to the small factory because there's not gonna be a whole lot that can be done here in Australia with uh, the way things are currently. Now, the modifications I've done is I created this really cool looking grill. Hold on, give me a second. I've created this uh, grill that goes into the headlight, which also acts as a bit of an opening for an air vent. You can see that I've got a, an opening there, which I, I think is a pretty cool idea. I, I like the look of it. Then on the front, we've uh, just gone for the generic cut holes in the bumper to get airflow type situation that they normally do. Around here would be where the number plate is, so that's a... Uh, Sure. I'm not too happy with these, but there's not really a whole lot that can be done, I suppose, for front downfall, so I just needed to make a deal with the devil. I think they would have been a lot better if I could have made this rear lip bigger, but when you try to make the, <laughs> the, sorry, the front lip bigger, it uh, then scrapes on the ground and I don't want that. I really don't. Then when we get around to the side, we got this really cool uh, side intake. It's both on, uh, same on both sides. I really do like the look of that quite a bit. Then coming around to the rear, I've done a fairly good job. You know what, I actually probably should widen out this wing so it doesn't intersect with the lights. I hope you guys enjoy this car as much as I have enjoyed so far making it. It looks pretty darn awesome. Oh damn it, it's not the chassis that is those gray bits. Oh, uh, that means I can't get rid of them. God damn it. There we go. Now we've got them more hidden, at least a little bit. So, just look at it right at that angle. And bam, you can't see it. Awesome. And now we launch BMNG. I think it's so awesome that two completely different games have been able to actually come together like this. I think it's so cool. And we are doing the Devil's Playground short again because we want to keep this consistent. Wait, where's the search function going? Really? They got rid of the search function? Well, I mean, that's fine because I've forgotten the name of the vehicle already. God damn it. Where is it? Oh, it's right here. The Tutor Winja. Stop being such a Winja. I don't know if whinge is an American term, but here in Australia, whinge means somebody that like complains a lot. Usually a child whinges. Why has it come out chrome? <laughs> what the hell? Why is that? That is strange. That is not the choice I made. I'm sorry game, but no, that's not what I did. Well, I suppose we don't have a whole lot of choice, so we're just gonna have to live with it as it is. And give this a bit of a try. Oh, the sound of that engine is amazing. Oh my god, it sounds so good. But this mirror <laughs> reflecting bonnet is just a little bit distracting <laughs> with this whole dealio. Though also hitting the rev limiter is kind of weird in this thing. And even though I tried to avoid it, we do have a lot of scraping, so that is not so great. Oh, my chair changed position. I don't know whether you know this, but in my steering wheel setup is not on my desk. I created myself uh, a custom welded together cockpit thing, and I'm using just an old car seat that's kind of a little bit buckety. All right, so I have to remember, oh God, that there is no rev limiter. For some reason, it's just getting up close to where it is, and then it just basically has an issue. I think we might have to go silent for this and just have voiceover. So I do know the track a little bit better now that I've spent hours on it, but this new ute is a real handful. It may have more power, but with its lack of downforce, it's a real pain in the ass, and it's really unpredictable. Braking points had to be brought back, and with that extra power, accelerating was harder too. God damn it. Oh, I made it so far. Issue number two was once I got better, I was making it further. 
Excellent, right? No. Break fade. I'm not getting break fade, am I? God damn it. I think I might need to go to something a little bit harder than this. And then they failed. Ah, shit. Okay, guys. Uh, I need to take a quick break to go over to automation to change these brakes because these things are way reaching 1200 degrees, which is, yeah, just not working. So give me a second and back to automation. Fortunately, I only need to change the fronts. The rears seem to be doing quite fine. So hopefully, yeah, this will do what it needs to do. What was the price of this car, by the way? Wow, only $444,000. You know what? That's actually not too much for a race car. Though it is a lot for this being like kind of a one-off race car for a one-off race. I'm going to do one thing though to make my life a little bit easier. Hopefully that makes a world of difference. I'm also going to do that to hopefully get this color into BeamNG. Why does it look gray? There we go. We got the color to change. Unfortunately, black looks very different than what it looked like as gray over in automation. Ha! <laughs> gray! So, yeah, I mean, it's a little too black, but I, I mean, I still like it. Still looks pretty good. And let's hope that those slightly narrower tires aid me in surviving. Well, that didn't help. The issue was now I was getting good at the beginning and I was starting to get a little bit overconfident, but then what they clicked for me. If I turn the steering wheel about 90 degrees to the right when I take off, it counters that ginormous amount of torque steer. That was an interesting start. You can see how excited about it I am. The problem is, no matter how good I got, it was still quite unpredictable. Occasionally I'd get a part done better, but it wouldn't feel like it because it'd be all over the road. Then entering the next corner, I'd be carrying too much speed and I wasn't used with the brakes yet. Ugh. Then I'd fuddle around the beginning a little bit, you know, trying to figure out how to get it right. But then occasionally I would make it further than normal. And then... I would want to kill myself because god damn it! This isn't a race of the clouds, this is a race of a thousand deaths! Now you all may be saying, Phil, why not just try taking it slower and complete a safe lap? Well, I want to be the very best, like no lap that was ever timed. To break super late was my real test and to accelerate out was my true cause. I'll drive this a million times, taking braking too far and corners too wide to teach myself and understand the power that's under the hood. Pike's Peak, man, nail all the corners. I know it's my destiny for Pike's Peak. I know it's my destiny for Pike's Peak. Oh, you're my favorite track and trying a million times, I feel I must offend. Pokemon. Hey, what? No, not Pokemon. What? Restart. Eventually, though, I gave in and I started putting in a little bit of a mediocre try to survive and actually just try to complete a lap. And this is probably the fourth or fifth one in where I was actually trying to take it easy and it still was quite uncontrollable. Just the torque steer on this thing alone would be enough to just put anybody off of wanting to drive this car. Then getting up here, like, any of these corners, how fast do you take them? You don't know, because the torque steer will always throw you for a loop. But as you can see here, finally I got this corner correct. Yay. And as you look to the right here, you can see like, this thing just has death drops everywhere. And I'm afraid for my life. So yes, I did take this corner in third gear when that was really more of a fourth gear corner, but only if you're really lucky. In the other car, you could do fourth gear corners. They're really easy. Breaking here way earlier than what you need to be. Here I take this corner just absolutely abysmally. You can see I braked way too early. I'm in first gear, switching over to second gear, and then it's just, it's way too loose. You cannot put the traction down sometimes because you can just feel that that front end is just super, super loose. And then, yeah, right up here, you'll see that I fuddle up this corner. Awesome. Break a little bit later. Where do I break? I don't know. I stuffed up the last straight, so 
you come up to here. Now, this is always a bit of a tricky one here. You don't really need to brake. You just need to lift off to get the weight onto those front wheels. And then you stuff it up more. Now, what do I do about my braking zone? I go a little bit later than what my normal braking zone is, but clearly not late enough because I was once again not braking super late. Now, you can also hear my brakes squeaking a little bit there. And yes, they are getting quite red hot and yeah so i do take this corner quite nicely though coming up to the next one just watch this work of art just amazingly unfortunately in this next section i'm not really familiar with the track anymore i get here so infrequently so you can see i'm just going a little bit slower than what you would think that you could probably do around here and you're about to see me break a little too early there yeah see i just i don't know what i'm doing i don't know where these corners come up i i think i've been to this corner probably four times ever because it is so hard to get here and then watch this yep i i that's how infrequent i come here i've lost all my downforce and i've soft up now this thing is going to start pulling to the left a little bit and you're going to see my steering wheel having to go to a little bit to the right and i just it's so sketch but the end is right there and i don't want to give it up and you, there's going to be one last little incident as we come up here i just i couldn't thread the needle perfectly oh my god but guys yes oh my god we've finally done it and even with those crashes we're only Five, seven seconds behind? Oh, that so makes me want to do another lap. <laughs> but I don't want to. This car is hard to control. <laughs> okay, let's have a look to see what actually happened to the car there at the end. Because right at the end, I also did clip ever so slightly just a little bit. You know what? Not a whole lot of damage. Real oh, okay. Well, I mean... Oh my god, I lost both wheels on that side? Damn! But, yeah, I mean, this side looks fine. I don't know. He's learning about nothing. <laughs> well, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Unlike the other cars, this one won't be going up on the server. This one will be going... onto Google Drive, and the link will be in the description so you guys can try it out too. So, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I, yeah, I'm done. <laughs> Goodbye. I'm out. See ya.